Security Agency in Uganda's capital made a number of arrests on Tuesday as protesters marched near Parliament to stop what they call abuse of power and high levels of corruption. Businesses were shut down and roads towards Parliament blocked as security agencies arrested pockets of young demonstrators. Halima Atumani reports from Kampala. A heavy military and police presence in and around Kampala left the streets deserted as pockets of young people marched toward Parliament Tuesday. Under the hashtag, March to Parliament, demonstrators demanded the resignation of Speaker of Parliament Anita Mong, along with four members of Parliament who recently shared an award of US dollars for public service. They also called for an audit of legislators' income. Many of the unarmed, placard-wielding protesters were thrown into police vans. Salim Papawere spoke to journalists from under police van seats where he'd been pushed. We are protesting against escalating levels of corruption in Uganda. I was marching because I want Anita Monk to resign. She has stolen from this country. These resources are not hers. This is taxpayers' money. Almost an hour later, another group of nine youth appeared just meters from Parliament. Before they too got arrested and thrown into the police van. Kiria Samson was among that group of nine arrested. Drugs in the hospitals, bad roads, Kampala is the pothole capital. It's because of corruption. We are tired. Parliament spokesperson Chris Obore told VOA protesters should have addressed their concerns through proper channels instead of demonstrating. This one is something disguised as a petition. If it is about the Speaker of Parliament, the Speaker of Parliament is not appointed by anybody. The Speaker of Parliament is elected by members of Parliament. Is it members of Parliament demanding her to resign? The campaign around the Speaker Anita Mong is a smokescreen by those who have their ulterior motives. In May, both the United States and United Kingdom sanctioned Speaker Mong over reports of corruption and abuse of office. There was hope that today's protests would mimic events in neighboring Kenya, where youth have been protesting since June, and successfully forced Kenyan President William Ruto to withdraw a proposed tax hike and overhaul his cabinet. Activist and law professor Wusinje Kabumba says it's unfortunate that Uganda's parliament has gone ahead to sit without acknowledging the protesters' demands. He thinks protests in Uganda could still unfold the way they did in Kenya. I sit there as being the starting uh, shot in what is likely to be a, a longer struggle. But either way, I think the critical similarities are to do with the genuine concerns of the youth and their determination to change the political system in which they find themselves. While Ugandan President Yoram Seveni warned protesters that they were playing with fire by marching to parliament, no tear gas was fired Tuesday to disperse on Lucas. It was not immediately clear how many protesters were arrested or when they might appear before courts. Halima Athmani for VA News, Kampala, Uganda. For more on the situation in Kampala, VOS Douglas Mpuga reached Sise Kagaba, a lawyer and the former executive director of the Anti-Corruption Coalition of Uganda. The protest has happened. It may not have been necessarily in the big number that people uh, probably would have expected. But I would say that the youth have used uh, a rather interesting strategy whereby they haven't met at one particular place, but you've seen others coming from different uh, locations, not necessarily organized which I think for me is a plus. But of course, again, you wouldn't expect the big numbers because of the heavy deployment, the intimidation that government has put in place. Because, I mean, by yesterday, we saw quite a number of heavy artillery moving around town. So, and of course, for those that have managed to reach parliament, some of them have been arrested. But even those that haven't reached parliament, as long as they're holding placards, they have actually been arrested. The only, again, interesting that some of the lawyers, I think, including the president of the Uganda Society, some of them have been denied access to those that are 
have been arrested, which I would say is uh, unfortunate and does infringe on a person's right to legal representation. But by and large, I think we haven't really seen a fatality is like shooting at people. But of course, there have been some form of mishandling or manhandling of uh, particular protesters. But uh, in as far as loss of life currently, I don't think I've been able to see any online as, as, as per now. But we understand that a lot of heavy uh, military deployment and police and as you say, some people were arrested. Are those who are protesting willing to continue given that intimidation? I think they are because there are quite a number of Twitter or say X spaces that are currently ongoing and uh, you can tell that uh, the momentum is still on. They are actually saying they want also to continue tomorrow. So I think this is something that is most likely to to continue and again when you follow what is online the way the lawyers that i think that won't stand by see that who are willing to provide meals the others that are willing to provide medical assistance and the uniqueness again in in, in what we've seen in this is that we've seen some others sporadically coming up like in uh hoima i think people the people in hoima who are also engaging so you may see Anticipating that maybe as the week goes by, you may have others uh, springing out in different parts of the country, not necessarily the capital. A Sierra Leone court found 11 people guilty of treason and other offenses following what authorities have called an attempted coup with their leader sentenced to almost 200 years in prison, a judicially spokesman said Tuesday. In November, dozens of gunmen broke into the country's armory and into a prison where the majority of the more than 2,000 inmates were freed. The clashes left 18 security forces dead. Authorities at the time said they arrested around 80 suspects and a dozen were charged in January, including former President Ernest Bayi Koroma, later granted medical leave. The man accused of leading the attack, Amadou Kweta Makor, was sentenced Monday to 182 years in prison on charges of treason, murder, and shooting with intent to murder. The judiciary's spokesperson, Moses Ramini Kamara, told the place. Makaro is an ex-bodyguard of Koroma and has been a vocal critic of the current President Julius Madabio on social media. The other 10 were also found guilty of treason and murder and received lengthy prison sentences ranging from 30 to 112 years. Although officially retired from politics, Koroma remains an of influential figure within his political party. Many of those arrested in connection to the attack were former associates of the ex-president, Information Minister Chemor Ba. There have been political tensions in Sierra Leone since Bio's re-election last year in a vote that the opposition claimed was rigged in his favor. Two months after he was re-elected, police said they arrested several people, including senior military officers, planning to use protests to undermine peace. Sierra Leone is still healing from a, an 11-year civil war that ended more than two decades ago, and its population of 8 million people is among the poorest in the world. Neighboring Guinea remains politically unstable after a coup in 2021.